Okay, kids, wake up. Wake up, pay attention. All you teenagers are like, yes, he's talking to the kids. Teenagers, wake up. I'm talking to you too. Young people, wake up. So we're going to finish up the household series. So I, kids, I yelled at your parents for the last two weeks and this morning, or this evening, I don't know why I'm so messed up on that. AM and PM is really throwing me for a loop in the last couple weeks. But we're going to end with children and talking about children. Look down at Ephesians chapter 6. Let me give you um, a couple disclaimers before we get started um, with the sermon for the kids uh, this evening. We talked about your parents, kids. We talked about your dads the first week. We talked about your moms the second week. And this morning, or this evening, we're going to talk about you. So first of all, let me just say that this sermon is for my kids too. So my kids listen up. It's not, uh, I don't ever want to feel like or I don't ever want you to think or feel that I'm standing up here as a perfect parent that has perfect kids. I mean, have you met my kids? <laughs> you know? So I don't have perfect children. This sermon is for them as well. Look down at Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 1. The Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So if you're between 4 and 24 this evening, pay attention. We're talking to you. The Bible has a lot to say to children, about children, and it's serious, the things that the Bible talks about. Look at um, Deuteronomy chapter 21, because verse 23, or verse 3 of Ephesians chapter 6, so parents, if you're sitting next to little kids, you know, show them these verses from the Bible, especially when I get to the verses in Proverbs. Proverbs, kids, if you were an 8-year-old, 9-year-old, 10-year-old kid, you know, your parents should be reading you Proverbs. You should be listening um, to the Bible. In particular, the book of Proverbs is great for young children, teenagers, young adults, the whole thing. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 21. Ephesians 6 3 says that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. It says that if you obey your parents, you know, that has a direct reference to how long you'll live, to how long your life will be on this earth, which is what we talked about this morning. Many people are concerned with this. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 18. The Bible says it's given an example of a rebellious child, a rebellious son whose parents have lost control of this child. Assuming, I talked about it a couple weeks ago, you know, we're kind of assuming that this is a young adult at this point that their parents have lost control of. And, and the Old Testament law had some pretty serious punishment in this situation. Look at verse 18. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father, so Ephesians 6 verse 1 says, Obey your parents, kids. And, but in Deuteronomy chapter 21 in the Old Testament, if a child did not obey and just rebelled against their parents, this is what would take place, which would not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them. Then shall his father and mother lay hold on him and bring him unto the elders of the city and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, This is our son, is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. He is someone who has zero self-control. He has no self-control. And all the men of the city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. So you're sitting there, and you're thinking this, you know, this evening, you're thinking, you know, I'm just a kid. You know, I'm just a kid. But turn to Proverbs chapter 20. And parents, I want you to show you know, your children if they can read this verse. You say, this is pretty serious. You know, I'm supposed to obey my parents. Yeah, that's obvious. I know. I've been having people tell me that since, you know, I was this tall. You know, what new do you have to say? And you say, I'm just a kid. You're being pretty hard on me. You know, telling me this story in the Old Testament about how they stoned rebellious children in the Old Testament. Well, here's the thing. Look at Proverbs chapter 20 and verse number 11. Here's the thing, just a kid. Here's the thing, just a teenager. Here's the thing, I'm just a young person. You know, I make all these mistakes and I do all these things and I don't really have to worry about what I'm doing because I'm just a kid. I'm just young. But look at what the Bible says in Proverbs 20 and verse 11. Well, let me remind you before I read this that everything that the Bible says is true. Okay, if the Bible says it, it's true. Whether you like it or not, 
whether you think it's true or not. In verse 11 it says, even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. So I'm going to give you three things this evening that if you do them, kids, look, I can't go through the entire character that you should have in your life in one sermon. But I'm going to give you three things, kids, young people, that if you do these three things that you will be known by them. Or if you, you know, do them the wrong way, you will be known by those things. Because the Bible here says, you know, the Bible says a good name, you know, many adults reference this verse, a good name is rather to be had than silver or gold. But the Bible here says even about kids, that the things that you do, you will be known by. And I'm, I'm, this is true down to two years old, I'm telling you. That a two-year-old, a three-year-old, a four-year-old, a five-year-old, a six-year-old, they're known by what they do. They're known by how they act. And look, it may be you know, mainly put on the parents when they're very young, but very quickly in children's lives they become known by the things that they do. Their doings. Their doings. So I'm going to give you, turn to Proverbs chapter 6. I'm going to give you three things this evening. This isn't, a, just, this isn't all there is, but I'm going to give you, I'm going to hit three main areas. Look at Proverbs chapter 6, and look at verse number 19. Or let's just read at verse number 16. The Bible is talking here in Proverbs chapter 6 about seven things that the Lord hates. Now, if there's things that the Lord hates, kids, you should pay attention to those things. You should pay attention to those things, and you don't want to be anywhere near those things. Okay? Look at Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16. The Bible says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devised wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and here's what I want to talk about first, he that soweth discord among the brethren. So the first thing that I want to talk about this evening for the kids is that kids, children, young people that sow discord will be known by this. You will be known as someone that does this. Look, here's some examples of this, kids. Like an overarching example, and I'll give you specific examples, but it's just, you know, being mean to people. Being a, being a mean kid. You ever met a mean kid? Let me say another thing before I get started. Let me like add it. I think we, this is a preventative maintenance sermon because I actually think that we have a pretty good group of kids here. Okay, now kids, don't get a big head about that, but this is preventative maintenance. I want you to pay attention to this. Look, kids can be extremely mean. Kids can be very mean. So kids, you need to be friendly to one another. Don't get so used to all your friends around the church that you're not remembering to be friendly to one another. Kids have this, kids have this tendency to, to fall into this because it comes from an immature place. It comes from being immature. You know, some adults never grew out of it. And you'll meet those types of adults. But the reason that it comes from immaturity, and the reason it's so easy for kids to be mean to each other, is because, look, kids, it's a really easy way to build yourself up and make yourself feel good by putting somebody else down. It's a really easy way to get a quick self-esteem boost for yourself by stepping on somebody else's head, by, by putting somebody else down. Look, especially kids in groups of other kids, it's easy for kids to want to make fun or push somebody else down to maybe to, to get a laugh from somebody. Now look, now look, I stand up here and I, kids, I stand up here and I, I give the announcements and I try to be funny every now and then. I try to be funny. And you know what? It makes, it makes me feel really good when I say something that everybody laughs at. And kids, you're going to be in groups of other kids and it's, it makes you feel good when people laugh at a joke that you say, when people you know, think that you're funny. That makes you feel good. But look, kids, if you're getting laughs at other people's expense by making fun of somebody else, 
That is not right. You are sowing discord amongst your brothers and sisters. Siblings, brothers and sisters, literal brothers and sisters, don't do this to each other. Brothers and sisters, look, be kind to your siblings. Be kind to your brother. Be kind to your sisters. You need to grow up being kind and helping and standing up for one another in your family. This will make, because you know what, kids? This will make good relationships with your brothers and sisters into adulthood. Because let me tell you something, kids. You think that it's no big deal to be eight years old and make fun of your sister or be nine years old and make fun of your brother. But let me tell you something. These are the kind of things that adults remember that can actually hurt your relationships with your brothers and sisters. Yeah, I mean, you say they're my brothers and sisters. We'll always be close because we're related to each other. Wrong. That is not how it works. Do not sow discord amongst your brothers and sisters or your friends or brothers and sisters in Christ at church. How you treat each other matters. So appreciate all the friends that you have here, kids. Let's talk about this. Kids, here's another thing that you'll be known for. If, known for. if you're really mean all the time and you're constantly putting everybody else down, you know what you'll be known for? You'll be known as a bully. You'll be known as a bully. You'll be known as a mean kid. I mean, everybody, I bet if you asked any adult in this room about, you know, a mean kid from when they were growing up, they would remember his name or remember her name. I mean, that's how, you know, look, I always hated bullies. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with these people. But I hated it, you know? I mean, look, chiding people, picking on others. Look, it's, you know, first of all, it's just not going to be allowed here. Okay? It's not going to be allowed here. You know, I've told the adults the same thing. As far as, you know, we want to be friendly. So look, and let, me, let me talk about another thing for the kids. Visiting kids. Visiting uh, church people. People that come here that aren't normal, you know, aren't normal church members here. I mean, that is going to happen. It has happened. Look, here's the thing, kids. There's going to be kids that come to this church, that visit this church, and they're not going to look like you. They're not going to have, you know, the, the right haircut. Maybe they're not going to, you know, look like the clothes that everybody else wears here. Maybe they're going to, you know, you know, whatever. They're going to be different in general. But here's the thing, kids, and I've told the same thing to your parents again and again. You need to be friendly. You need to be kind. You need to be merciful because maybe these kids didn't grow up in church. Maybe these kids have no idea what the Bible says. But here, they're, they're putting one foot in the door. They're putting one foot in the door and they have a chance to start learning what the Bible says. You need to be friendly. You need to be friendly. If, look, one thing that would just trigger me is if somebody was mean to a visiting kid in, in this church. I mean, that would be, look, that would be a terrible thing to happen. Because guess what, kids? You know what? You know what? The parents of that visiting kid, the first thing that they do when they get in the car to leave this church, they ask those kids, how, how, was, how was the church? And, and God forbid that a visiting child would say, well, somebody was mean to me or somebody was making fun of me. I mean, you know what they need to say? And I hope that they have always said, and I'm sure that they have said, but they need to continue to say when they get in the car and they talk to their par parents. You know what they need to say? They need to say, man, those kids were super nice. Man, those kids were just super friendly. Everything was super appropriate. And, you know... It needs to look different than what they're dealing with out in the world. It needs to look different than the public school. It needs to look different than the kids on their block. You know, you need to act different. You need to, I don't know, have, have, like, have a loving attitude and a friendly attitude towards people. Turn to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18, look at verse 24. You say, well, you know, nobody likes me. You say you're a kid and you're like, you know, I'm always worried that people, you know, don't like me and I don't feel like I have enough friends and, you know, nobody likes me. Well, the Bible has the answer for that too. Look at Proverbs 18, 24. The Bible says a man, or you could even substitute a child right here, a man that have friends must show himself friendly. Look, the Bible says if you're friendly, people will like you. If you're friendly, everybody's going to want to be around you. 
Everybody's going to want, I mean, look, if you've ever complained that nobody likes you, this is probably why. Right. It's because you're not, I mean, if you're mean, nobody wants to be your friend. If you're mean. So you must be friendly. That's the first thing I want to point out. You must be friendly. You must be kind to one another. It's the culture of our church here. Amen. It's the culture of our church. We want people coming here visiting. We want people, the kids, the adults, whoever, we want them. And look, I mean, it's a genuine thing here. Look, this isn't something that, you know, you, you have to fake or that needs to be faked. It, it just needs to be, you need to think about other people. It's, it's really that simple. Think about other people. Be kind to one another. Now go back to Proverbs chapter 20. And let me give you a second thing, kids, that will define what people think of you. You will be known as this. You will be known as this if you do it. Proverbs chapter 20, look at verse 17. This one comes up in the list of seven things. This one comes up twice. Look at verse 17. It says, a proud look, a lying tongue. In verse 19, a false witness that speaketh lies. A false witness is somebody that's going around saying something about other people that's not true. And then a lying tongue is in verse 17. So look, kids, here's another big one. That if you do this, you will be known by it. And you know what? This is one of those things where you don't have to do it very much. You just have to do it once or twice, and you're known as this. And that's a liar. You don't want to be known as a liar, kids. So look, lying is a super serious sin. We use it all the time when we're out soul winning as a sin that everybody does, as a sin that everybody has done it. But kids struggle with this. Why? Because kids do a lot of stuff wrong. Kids mess up a lot of things. Kids do things that they know that they weren't supposed to do because they're learning, they're growing, they're kids. And then when they get caught doing something wrong, their first reaction is to lie about it. Did you do that? No, no, I didn't do that. To try to get themselves out of trouble. Kids, look, it's better to own up to things. If you did it and it wasn't the right thing to do, just own up to it. I mean, own up to it, take your punishment, and move on. It, it's, it's, it's that simple, kids. But here's, an, here's another form of lying that you'll see kids really fall into. It's this. It's manipulating people to get your way. Kids will do this. Here's a perfect example of this. Is a kid will go to mom and ask for something. You know, uh, a cookie or whatever. And then mom says no, so what do they do? They go ask dad. I mean, that's a common way of children. Um, it's the oldest one in the book, right? I mean, some kids are laughing. It makes me wonder if that's what you do all the time. <laughs> But look, it's a way of, it's a form of manipulation, and it shouldn't be done, kids. Look, manipulating people or trying to manipulate people, you will be known by this. You will be known by this. And look, here's the thing, it will follow you into adulthood. This kind of behavior, this is the, this is the person that we know as adults that lies to get out of trouble at work. All right, have you ever met this person? This is the person that lies to their, their spouse that lies to their husband or wife, you know, causing marriage issues. This is what this can lead to. And, and frankly, you know, it's, it's someone who's just not an honest person to the point of, of being a liar. Turn back to Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. So what have we covered? We covered being friendly. We covered lying. But you know what else you could be known as? You could be known as a really friendly person that tells the truth all the time. You ever met a kid that's constantly, I can think of this kid in my mind from Verity Baptist in Sacramento. The kid was always in trouble. He was in trouble all the time. But you know, I mean, the kid, I mean, I would work security. I'm not going to mention his name, poor little guy. But I would work security and I would sit in the, in the hallway and I'm like, man, this kid was getting dragged out every single service. And his mom was spanking him. You just hear it in the bathroom. You just whack, 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 whack. And I'm like, man. But you know what? This kid, he'd go out and he would do something wrong. And he'd be like, did you do that? And he'd be like, yeah. <sighs> you know, he was super honest. And you know what? Everybody just loved the kid. I mean, the kid was, he was a very likable kid. He was very, he was very friendly. And he was honest. He was messing up all the time. But he, he wouldn't lie about it. He would just own up to it and just get in trouble. 
and just, you know, and look, that, that kid's going to turn out fine because of that. But look at Proverbs 11 and verse 13. Here's another, you know, cousin to lying right here. Look at Proverbs 11, 13. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that has a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. So look, kids, let me talk to you about, for a few minutes here, let me talk to you about secrets. Let me talk to you about secrets. First of all, kids, kids, kids love secrets, don't they? Kids, you love secrets, don't you? Don't, doesn't a kid like to know that something some, you know, other people don't know? I know a secret. Here's the thing, kids. Secrets are always bad. Secrets are bad. And look, if someone is coming up to you and saying, hey, this is a secret, don't tell anyone. Here's the thing, kids. Usually it's either extremely sinful or completely untrue. One of those two things. Or both. Or both. So just remember, kids, that secrets are always bad. And the same thing I talk to um, the adults about gossip. If it doesn't affect the church, it doesn't affect you, don't go around telling other kids about it. Even if you know it. Even if you overheard something, just don't go around telling other kids about it. And if you aren't sure, if you aren't sure, kids, listen very carefully. If you aren't sure, go tell your parents. If you aren't sure about what to do, go talk to your parents about it. And look, don't ever keep secrets from your parents, kids. Because look, bad people, now here's a safety moment for the kids. Bad people never want kids to tell their parents anything. So kids, listen up. If somebody ever comes up to you as a kid and says, hey, don't tell your parents this. If anybody comes up to you, if you're two years old, three years old, four years old, all the way up to 18 years old, and somebody ever comes up to you, and I don't care if they're a kid or an adult, and they say, hey, don't tell your parents this. You know what the first thing that you do, kids? You go tell your parents. That's what you do. Nobody should ever come up to you and say, don't tell your parents this. Because, look, and, and it, you know what's interesting? is I heard this story several times when public school got canceled last year and they all went to like online Zoom meetings. But I heard this several times and there was actually some public schools that were having parents sign waivers that say, you know what, we won't watch the Zoom classes. Parents had to sign waivers to say, we will not watch the classes. I mean, we will not, I mean it's not like we won't interject or we won't interrupt. No, it's like we won't participate and watch. What in the world? What are you teaching the kids? I was going to say, what are you teaching my kids? But they're not teaching my kids anything. Amen. Ever. I mean, you know. But if you are foolish enough to have your kids in public school and, you know, uneducated enough, let's put it that way, from a biblical perspective, and, and you're going to go, I mean, they don't want, look, they, what they're teaching your kids there, they don't want the parents involved. They don't want the parents to see, what, this, is, this has been this way for a long time. It just popped out when it came to the Zoom meetings and all these online remote things. But look, the bottom line is, they're not teaching good things, and they're not teaching things that parents would ever want their children taught. Parents that no, don't even have to be saved, they just have the law written in their heart, that have a conscience. And they know that those things are wrong. So kids, listen, if anybody ever comes up to you and says, don't tell your parents, the first thing that you, look, you're, I don't even care what they say will happen to you if you do tell your parents. Just remember, your dad is stronger than anybody out there. Okay? You go tell your parents about those situations. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 8. I'm not going to keep you too long tonight. I know we've got um, the potluck going. But I just want you kids to know that you will be known. You will be known by how you act now. So you're not just a kid. You're not just a kid. Everyone will know. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 8 and look at verse 1. Even some great men of the Bible had some children. I'm just going to give you um, one example here, but had children that everybody knew. Everybody knew that they were bad. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verse number 1. The Bible says, Samuel, the last judge. Samuel, and it came to pass when Samuel was old, and he made his sons judges over Israel. 
The name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes, and preferred a judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and came to Samuel unto Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Look, everyone knew that these kids were bad. Everyone knew all the issues that these kids had. And they're like, you know, this is where the first king came from. This wonderful man named King Saul. But look, here's another thing I want to end with tonight. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 2. Kids, if you don't listen to your parents... If you don't listen to your parents, and this is especially for the older kids, maybe the teenagers, maybe the young people, listen very carefully. If you are saved, if you are saved and you're like, you know what, I'm just not going to listen to godly advice. If you don't obey your parents in the Lord, kids, look at Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 29. The Bible says this, it says, Wherefore will ye plead with me? Ye all have transgressed against, against me, saith the Lord. In vain have I smitten your children. They receive no correction. Your own sword hath devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. I'm just using this example here to prove the fact that in this case, you know, look, if you don't obey your parents, God is going to take over chastening you. If you are saved and you're not going to obey your parents in the Lord, then the Bible says that God's going to chasten you at that point. And in this case... Once it got to God correcting them in the children of Israel's case here, it was too late. God said, but did it say he didn't do it? No, he did it anyway. He still chastened them. It was just too late for, to correct them. It was already too late. So kids, look. How you behave, how you behave now will define your entire life. You say, I'm just a kid, I mess up, and I'm just going to continue messing up. But just please listen to me. Turn to Proverbs chapter 19. Kids, you have good parents. You have a good church. You need to heed instruction. Because the decisions that you make and the things that you do as a child will define your entire life. Look at Proverbs 19 and verse number 20. The Bible says, Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou may, mayest be wise in thy latter end. Look, it says, it says, Hear counsel and receive instruction so you can be a wise adult, kids. So when you get older, you'll be wise. You know what happens if you don't hear counsel and you don't receive instruction, look, you could sit here and you could listen to the preaching and if you're just like, whatever, and you're going to sleep through it all and it's going to go in one ear and out the other and you don't have ears to hear, as Jesus would say, you're not going to be wise in the latter end. You're going to be a stupid adult just like you were a stupid kid. And I see stupid adults every single day of my life. I see foolish adults. They're going out. They're making terrible decisions. They're ruining their lives. They're ruining their marriages. They're ruining their children. They're ruining their whole lives because they didn't receive instruction. So you kids have no excuse because you have all this instruction. I mean, you should be thanking God that you have parents that are sitting here. You should be thanking God that you have a church that's going to teach you the Bible. Even the, even the stuff that's not politically correct, or whatever that means. It's, we're going to teach you the whole Bible here. We're going to teach you the dangers of the world that's out there. And look, you'll be wise in the latter end, the Bible says. You'll be a wise adult. And then you know what? You have a chance at raising wise children, at raising godly children yourself. So, I mean, the point I'm trying to make is that how you act right now, eight-year-old, will define your entire life. How you act right now, 17-year-old, 20-year-old, look, raise your hand, kids, raise your hand, raise your hand, let's take a poll. Raise your hand if you want to marry a loser. Raise your hand. You're like, I want to marry a loser. Young ladies, anybody, any takers? I want to be strapped to a loser for my entire life. But look, the decisions that you make now could, could end up making that happen. 
if you don't receive instruction, if you don't heed wise advice. Raise your hand if you don't ever want to be able to support a family. You don't ever want to be able to support a family. Raise your hand, raise your hand, and, and look, I don't know, there's a lot of people out in the world right now that must, be ra must raise their hand with this one, but raise your hand if you want to have no friends. Because like a large percentage of the population has no friends. And the people that do think that they have friends, like all their coworkers and things, those, they, they have no friends. Right. Not, not the kind of friends that you have. Right. Okay, but, I mean, but look, here's the thing. You think this sermon's pretty simple, but if, if you're an adult and you're mean, and you're a liar, and you're constantly trashing people behind their back and telling secrets about people behind their back, look, you're going to have no friends right. as an adult. I mean, this works for the adults, too. Raise your hand if you want your brothers and sisters and your, bro I mean, your brothers and sisters, your actual brothers and sisters to, to dislike you when you get to be an adult. I mean, who would want that? Look, you're going to be on your own one day, kids. And how you're acting now, and look, the older I get, the more that I see that these, these how you're acting now, kids, it's defining your character as you become an adult. It's defining your very future. Develop good character now, and it will carry you far. The one thing I've learned is that character flaws form... Look, first of all, character flaws you see in, in older adults, they formed when they were young. They formed when the adults were, were children. And it's like, it's like impossible. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult for people to get rid of or change, you know, these flaws in their character. So develop good character now by listening to your parents, by listening to the Bible, by receiving instruction. And then, you know what? You'll be known by your doings, you'll be known as a nice person. You'll be known as, the kid I was telling you about was like five or six. I mean, he's known as a nice kid. Look, you'll be known people, and guess what? If you're a nice person, if you're a nice, look, kids, if you're seven and you're super nice to everybody, guess what? There's always going to be other kids around you. It's just going to happen. It's just going to happen. If you're seven years old and you're, you're like, I'm only seven, just be seven and be super nice to everybody around you and just be, be always conscious about, especially if there's a visiting child, make sure he's never by himself, he always has something, somebody to play with, he's always included. If you ever see a kid off by himself, make sure he's included. Make sure that you're a super friendly kid and people are just going to want to be around you. You will never be alone. Kids will just flock to you. And look, that's what the kid that's making fun of people all the time, the kids that, that's beating people down, the kid that is trying to make jokes at other people's expense, that's what he's after. He's trying to get kids to be around him and laugh at him, but he's doing it in the wrong way. He's doing it at other kids' expense. But just become, look, become someone who is nice. And the Bible says that you'll have friends if you're, I mean, is that rocket surgery? If you're friendly, you will have friends. Brilliant. But that's what it takes. People will want to be your friends. And that's what you want. But you must take these proper actions. You must own your decisions, kids. When you get in trouble, just own up to it. Did you do it? Yep, I did it. When your mom says no, that's just the answer. You know, don't look, kids, you're not going to manipulate adults. It, it, everyone's going to know what you're doing. And then you're just going to be known as a liar. You're going to be known as, as someone who does that. And if you're going around telling secrets and all this kind of stuff, tail bearing, you're going to be known as that. You're going to be known as that. I mean, if anybody comes up to you with a secret, just go tell your parents. Don't tell anybody this. Just go tell your dad. He'll take it from there. So kids, look, how you act, you say, I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid. You're, you're defining your entire future. You see a kid, and you know what, honestly, when I see, and, and from, raising, from raising the kids that we have, and, you know, watching kids go from that, that one-year-old, because look, my kids, you know, you, a lot of you have young children, guess what? My kids used to be young. 
I had, I've had two-year-olds before, and I've had one-year-olds and three-year-olds before, and now I see how that translated. I see how maybe something we let go, or I see how you know, they, they turned into their character, turned from it went from three years old into how it was when they were ten, and you know, look, you got to fix these problems, kids, before you get to you know, adulthood, or you're going to be struggling with things. So just listen to this instruction. It's very simple. Be a nice person. Be friendly. When people come to this church, you should be the friendliest one. You should be, you know, whether it, it's girls or boys or whatever age it is, be known as a friendly person. Be known as an honest person and be known as someone who would never, you know, talk bad about somebody because that will translate into horrible things. All these things will translate into horrible things as adults. So that's just a few things for the kids to think about this evening. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer.